Hello there, Audrey Ann here from Live Snap Love. I hope you are having a wonderful day today. I'm popping in, this is a little bit of an unscheduled live because I wanted to talk to you a little bit about getting sharp images. And uh, the reason I wanted to come in and talk about this is because it is probably the most uh, asked question in this group. So nearly every week I'll come in and someone will be saying something about their images not being sharp enough. So I wanted to come in so that I had a resource in the group that I could point you to or point people to when they ask that question. Um, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go through some areas for you to look at if you feel that your images aren't getting or aren't sharp enough, aren't as sharp as you would like and you don't feel that you're getting as good a focus in your images as you would like. So that's what we're going to talk about today. If you want to make this really actionable, what I recommend that you do is grab some images, you can hit pause on this video or watch this live, um, go and grab some images that you feel aren't as sharp as you would like and you can then just kind of go through this list that I'm about to give you Go through this troubleshooting with me and see if one of these is your issue. So uh, watch it now live if you happen to be here. If you're watching the recording, then you can pause it, go and grab some photos and come back and do that. So that's what we're going to do today, this troubleshooting focus guide. So as I say, there's six areas, is there six? Yes, there's six areas that I am going to talk about today. And this is really the foundation for getting sharp images. And obviously in each one, there is little subsets of things that you need to learn, but um, we're just gonna go over these six main areas so you can see if any of these are causing your problems or it could be uh, a multitude of them. You could have more than one issue with your images. So without further ado, let's dive in. So the first reason for your images not being as sharp as you would like could possibly be that you're using too wide an aperture for what you're trying to photograph. So what tends to happen, and I see this a lot in new photographers, um, they want to get that blurry background and they've heard that using a larger aperture is the way to get those blurry backgrounds and then they pick up a lens, something like the Canon or the Nikon 50mm f1.8 and they proceed to shoot at f1.8 or f2.0. And uh, what they'll generally find then is that their images aren't particularly sharp. And what really is happening there is your aperture is giving you that depth of field, that area in focus. And if you have too small an area in focus, it can look like missed focus. And what that can often happen here if you, when you're photographing a person is that focus lands somewhere else on the face rather than that on the eyes. And when we look at an image of a person, um, the eyes need to be sharp. And we will perceive that image as not being sharp when the eyes are even just slightly soft. So it's really important for getting those sharp, um, sharp images is to make sure that we have everything we want in focus. So taking this as a portrait, as an example, if you were using too wide an aperture, you might end up with the nose in focus, but the eyes, which are just, well, in the case of my nose, it might be, might be bigger, but uh, you know, just that inch slightly behind, if your focus lands on the nose as opposed to the eyes, you'll see the eyes as being soft and out of focus. And of course, that's gonna say, my images aren't as sharp as they would like. So that is one thing for you to look at. So when you're doing your troubleshooting, have a look at your images and have a look at the aperture number, the f-stop number that you used. And if you are continually using these smaller, sorry, these larger apertures, that smaller f numbers, then um, be very, very, you have to be very, very careful when you're doing that. And if you're first starting out, and you're not entirely sure if you're focusing and you're not entirely sure what aperture you should be using for your subject, then I would err more on the side of caution and use a slightly smaller aperture. It's gonna give you that bit more wiggle room with your focus and that will help your images look more sharp. So aperture, technically nothing to do with focus, it's your camera settings, but it will sh make your images look as though they're not as sharp as they should be. 
The second one, again, this is actually technically nothing to do with focus, but it's a common reason for your images not looking as sharp, and that is choosing too low a shutter speed for what you're trying to photograph. So shutter speed, as you hopefully know by now, shutter speed uh, controls how motion is captured. So if we want to freeze an image, we're going to use a higher shutter speed, and that's going to freeze the motion and make it look sharp. Now, if you are on auto or even on one of the semi-automatic modes, what will happen is that the camera will frequently choose a shutter speed that is too low for what you're trying to photograph. In fact, in many, many cases, it will, it will give you a shutter speed number that is too low even to hand hold your camera. I've seen um, in auto mode or even in, in one of the semi-automatic modes, if you don't have your, excuse my scarf, I'm freezing today, the, um, it, it will give you a, a, a number, something like you know one over 40. That's too, too slow to even hand hold your camera unless you're very, very steady or you luck out. So um, be very, very careful that you're choosing a sharp, sorry, a fast enough shutter speed for what you want to photograph. The faster the motion, the faster that shutter speed needs to be. And do just make sure, especially if you're shooting on auto or any of the semi-automatic modes like aperture priority, that you are making sure that your shutter speed isn't dipping below uh, a certain level when you're photographing. So one of the big problems um, with any of the semi-automatic modes, whenever you're letting the camera make decisions for you and make these adjustments, it's making them on the fly. It, it will give you different settings from one scene to the next. And even in the course of you know 30 seconds, you can end up with different settings. And you'll sometimes find that it just drops down um, too low because it keeps changing those settings. Strongly, strongly recommend that you shoot in manual mode. I have said that for for a year, if you've been here for a long time, you'll be thinking, oh my God, stop talking about manual mode. But that's really why, one of the reasons why you want to, to, to shoot in manual mode, you want to control all three of your settings and in any of the semi-automatic modes, your camera's making some of those decisions for you. And we definitely, definitely don't want that. So that's your aperture and your shutter speed. So um, as I said, if you're looking at your images while you're watching this troubleshooting guide, have a look at the shutter speed you used. Is it too slow for what you're photographing? So the third one is uh, another camera setting, actually, again, strictly nothing to do with focus, and that is your ISO number. So um, your ISO is your camera sensitivity to the light that you let in via your aperture and your shutter speed. And if you have a high ISO number, that can cause this kind of noise in your images. Now, what can often look like missed focus is actually just that little bit of noise in your image. And, or maybe not missed, missed focus, but it can make your images not look quite as sharp if you have a lot of noise in your image. So just check, um, you're probably already aware of this, but do just check that ISO number that you're using. And if that is high, it could be that um, it's not that your focus is wrong, it's that you have too much noise in your image. But it's, it can be difficult to tell the difference. Um, you have to get quite good at being able to evaluate your images and seeing what is the problem because it can look, um, it can look like other things. But that is something else to be aware of. Or if you have underexposed in camera and you've brought the exposure up, even if you're using a low ISO number, that's gonna make your noise worse. So again, have a look at your ISO number. Is that high or did you bring up the exposure in processing? It could be that you have just a little bit too much noise in your image and that is causing the whole scene to look softer than you would like. So moving on now, that is actually three camera settings there. That's your aperture, your shutter speed and your ISO. And Funnily enough, that is the three that you would choose in manual mode. So we do have a manual mode cheat sheet, which gives you some ideas of the numbers for your aperture, your shutter speed, and your ISO. Um, so if you haven't downloaded that already, go to audrianphoto.com forward slash manual mode. I'll actually, I don't know if I can type in 
a uh, comment here. Let me see if I can do that in just a moment. And uh, you can go and grab that and that will give you some better idea of your settings. I'm just gonna type that in just now. And you can see how bad a typer I am. There you go. And that um, you can go and grab that manual mode cheat sheet. Okay, let's move on now. So we've covered after shutter speed and ISO. So the other reason that your images might not be as sharp as you would like is your focusing mode. So now we're actually really getting on to focus here. So your focusing mode is your way of telling the camera what you are photographing. Now, when you first get your camera, it's going to be on auto. You are leaving it to the camera. You just don't want anything to do with that. You are gonna leave the camera to decide on that focusing mode. Though obviously we don't want that. If we want to get good photos, we have to learn how to take control of the camera ourselves. You, my friend, are 1,000 times more intelligent than your camera, even though it costs a lot of money and the pro use it. When you have that on any of the auto functions, and I mean that with your auto functions for your focus as well, you are not gonna get great images. You need to learn to tell the camera what you want it to do, and then it becomes an amazing piece of kit, but you have to take control. So taking control of your focusing mode is another thing that you can do to make sure that your images are sharp. Now, there are two sort of main focusing modes. So you've got um, Al Servo, if you are Canon, and that is AFC, if you're Nikon. I always have to think when it's Nikon because I use Canon, so it takes me a minute for my brain to connect them. Um, and that is the one you're going to use if you have moving subjects. The other main focusing mode is um, One Shot, if you're Canon, and that is AFC if you use Nikon. Now, if you use um, other models like Sony, they have something similar. So it might be called something different. I can't remember Sony's off the top of my head. I think it's actually the same as Nikon, but it's the same idea. Um, so yeah, so you have one shot or um, AFS if you use Nikon, and that is for still subjects. Now you have one that's in between there. And that is the, the auto mode. It switches between the two. It will switch between uh, one shot and our servo depending on when the camera thinks your subject is moving or still. Now, do not use that mode at all, ever. You never ever want to use that mode because you cannot rely on your camera to this bunch of wiring sensors to see whether your subject's moving or not. That's up to you. So don't ever use that one. So always make sure that you're using the correct focusing mode for what you're photographing. So if you haven't been doing that up until now, make sure that you start to do that. Uh, the next one is your focusing technique. Now there are different focusing techniques, there's different focusing strategies. You're going to mix and match different things depending on what you're photograph. But at the very, very basic level, you want to make sure that you're choosing your own focus point. Again, we're striving to take control of the camera. And when you have your camera set to automatically select the focus point, it can't tell really what you're photographing. It can't see a scene, remember? And it can't tell what you're trying to photograph. So it will just see this scene here and it has to try and dis decide whether to focus on me, the plant behind me, oh, it's the wrong side, <laughs> plant behind me, the light over here. Um, if somebody comes into the frame, does it switch focus? It doesn't know what to do. So it's just gonna have to take a guess. Um, so that's when you end up with something in focus in your image that you didn't want and the thing you did want in focus to be completely out of focus. So we always want to make sure that we are choosing our own focus point. And as you start to use those wider apertures that we spoke about in the beginning of this slide, then um, choosing your own focus point becomes absolutely critical. So get into the habit of doing that now. It does take a little bit um, it does take a little bit of getting used to if you haven't been doing that so far, but it definitely something that you want to get used to. And you'll believe me, trust me, when I say that after a while, you your little fingers will just go there and it will choose a focus point um, really quite quickly. 
and it really will depend also on how many focus points you've got the entry levels will have nine or eleven and then as you go up you can get you know 128 point focus point system so and it gets a bit more tricky to uh scroll quickly through those but uh certainly the best thing you can do is choose your own focus point so make sure that you're doing that as well so we covered five so far and we covered aperture shutter speed iso your focusing mode and we've just spoken about focusing technique the final one is the least likely one but it is one that i want you to be aware of and that is that there is a focusing problem or issue with your lens now the reason i'm putting that at the very bottom is because um, although it's one that a lot of people spend a lot of time worrying over, it's actually the least likely reason for you getting images that are not as sharp as you would like. Um, and as I said, that is when your lens needs calibrated to your camera. Now, I just want to tell you, I have had over the years 11 different lenses. Sold some of those. I actually might have had more, but I've sold some of those. Some of those I still have. Um, I've swapped out lenses and I actually calibrate, and I've been doing this now in total for 2007 till now, what's that, 13 years. And I calibrated for the first time ever, uh, just at the weekend or a few days ago, I can't remember when it was now. Uh, so that shows you just how often calibration usually needs to be done. And the only reason I think I needed to do it is I had noted, I think I must have knocked it or something, um, I'd been getting sharp images with that lens and then I noticed that it wasn't as sharp as they had been. So I decided to check and it needs calibrated, but I've checked all the other, other lenses and everything is fine. So generally it's called micro adjustment and it's when you adjust the focus systems uh, on your camera and in your lens so that they match. Uh, generally speaking, it's giving such a fine tuning that it doesn't, it, it, if there's not a problem, it's not going to help. In other words, there has to be a big problem for it to have made, make a difference. It, might, it does help, I mean, it fine tunes, that's great. But if you find your images are being soft, then that's probably not the issue. And one of the things I heard in the group um, the other day was somebody saying, oh yeah, my lens is front focusing and back focusing. Um, your lens cannot front and back focus. That's you, you, you are, there's something other than your lens at front. It will either constantly be front focusing or constantly be back focusing. It doesn't switch between the two. So that's something to, but it is something to be aware of. Um, so yeah, it's down there at the last, last one you really want to check, but it could be, so you can check that. Now, I do have a, a, a blog post on how to calibrate your uh, lenses and a cheap and cheerful way of being able to do that without even buying any tools. You can just do that with some batteries. Um, so I, I'll link to that once I'm finished here as well. So that's them all, 18 minutes, good going. Uh, so that is them all. Now, obviously, as I said at the start of this live, each one has uh, a lot to learn underneath it, but it will hopefully give you this basis of what you should be working towards to make sure that you have um, this great foundation in place for making sure that you can take sharp images. Um, Daniel's asking, how do you calibrate a lens? So um, there's, to actually calibrate it, do I have it handy? No, I don't think I do, unfortunately. Actually, just bear with me, I'll be back in one second. I'm back, I'm back. It's, uh, I'm easier to show than tell, so here we go. So this is a lens calibration tool. And can you see this? I don't want to move it too close because I'll end up getting out of, but what you have here is an area for you to focus on. So you set this up, it sets up like a kind of triangle and you focus on this area here. So this folds up, you focus on here. And at the side here is a number, it's, it's basically just like a tape measure. So you've got zero right where you should be focusing and then it goes one, two, three, four, five, six this way and then one, two, three, four, five, six that way. And if you focus here 
and you find that your the area in focus is down here where it says number two you know that you need to then calibrate your lens and you'll do that in your camera by um, going into something called it'll be different things in different cameras but called af micro adjustment something along those lines and you just adjust it until you get it back to zero or you can send your lens and your camera away to be calibrated as i say least likely um so the first thing i would do these things you can pick up this is a cheap and cheerful one you can spend a lot on a lens calibration tool but this cost about i don't know i think it was about ten dollars something like that for a pack of four or something like that i can't quite remember now um but very very cheap and cheerful um and i do go over how to actually set this up on the uh blog and i don't think it's still up because i did an instagram story on it i actually showed it all set up um how you could do that i'll see if i still have the images from that instagram story um, and i can share that with you daniel so you can see how that should be set up you essentially you need to have your camera level with that calibration tool but you will also find if you go to the blog um you will find quite recently we did i did a blog post on how to calibrate your lens so um be sure to check that out as well okay so that is everything for today that is our six uh things for you to look at if you're not getting sharp images as i say do make sure you download that manual mode cheat sheet um specifically uh, get, make sure you've got that basics right choose that correct focus mode make sure you're choosing your own focus point and if in doubt or if you just want to check go ahead and do a quick check on your lenses um, we do have another post which shows you how to use batteries just to line those up just to test your lens without having to go and buy any type of calibration tool or anything like that so i hope you find that helpful if you do please give it a like or a thumbs up or an emoji or something along those lines so that I know you enjoy these lives and you, um, uh, you get some value out of them. So it would be really helpful to know that as well. And if you aren't following me yet on Instagram on that side note, go make sure that you are. You'll find me as at LiveSnapLove. I've been doing some more things on stories, um, tips and behind the scenes and everything on there. So make sure that you go and follow me there as well. So thank you so much for being here and I will see you guys soon. Bye for now.